Hey gang, it's Amy from Dueling Rabbits Handweaving, here to introduce an exciting new resource for beginning and aspirational multi-harness weavers. A recipe for simple twill damask table mats woven on a pattern shaft draw loom. It's awesome. Now, I know there is no shortage of inspiration out there. Many instructional books contain compelling design ideas for just a few pattern shafts. Full-blown recipes for projects such as towels, table runners, and blankets can be found in a variety of sources. We can find charts for old damask motifs in the public domain and in books totally unrelated to weaving. Cross-stitch patterns especially are widely available and beloved of many drawloom artists. But even in the midst of all these riches, it can sometimes be a bit daunting to know where to begin. The first warp I ever wove on my drawloom was a series of table mats. Each one consisted of a central panel with repeated patterns inside a modest border. Some of the designs were borrowed from published sources and some I worked up myself. I used a neutral warp but different weft colors and ended up with a set of complementary pieces that are still in daily use at mealtimes. It was a great introduction to draw loom weaving. I never got bored, learned a lot, and ran out of warp long before I ran out of design ideas. I am delighted to announce that, as a result of admittedly modest demand, the instructions are now beta tested and freely available for public consumption. The recipe includes setup requirements, pattern shaft threading, and four lift plans illustrating a variety of design principles. It's intended as a confidence builder and starting point for lots of creativity at the loom. Here's what the project looks like. The warp is 16-2 cotton. A neutral color is great if you want to vary the colors of each individual mat. The weft is 8-2 cotton. Chances are you have lots of this in your stash. It makes for thickish yet supple cloth, perfect for table mats and runners. The patterns as drafted need 564 warp ends, wound in a 2x2 or 4x4 cross for ease of threading. The set is 40 ends per inch for a width in the reed of a little over 14 inches. The finished dimensions of the mats are about 12 inches by 17 although of course you can make them however long you like. The mats are woven in four end broken twill, so each unit leash contains four ends, 141 units in total for design purposes. That means you'll need 141 lingos. You could weave these mats using half heddle sticks, I suppose, but they're much more fun on a draw loom. You'll need four ground shafts and four treadles. Either damask pulleys or a countermarch can be used, the design calls for 11 pattern shafts, 10 for the pattern and 1 for the borders, plus a static X shaft. As with most damask, the ground shafts are threaded straight. The tie-up is for broken twill. If you're using damask pulleys like I did, you'll only need four connections to your short lambs, surely the simplest tie-up in the entire world. The threading of the pattern shafts is in simple, repeated points with a few additional units on either side for borders and selvages. The back of the loom is up here at the top, and the front of the loom is below. The diagram is read from right to left from our perspective inside the loom facing the back beam. The shaft at the top, numbered 12, is the X shaft. These units will never be pulled during weaving. The recipe includes four different patterns, which showcase different design approaches made possible with this simple setup. For each, you can see what the finished mat looks like, a lift plan with numbered shafts woven from the bottom up, and a diagram showing one repeat of the pattern only, where black squares represent raised shafts. The first draft, which is an adaptation of an upholstery fabric in Damask and Opemta, is a simple, repeated motif that marches up and down the piece without variation. In the second piece, we repeat a diamond-shaped frame in a similar fashion, but include inside the frames two different motifs. These small patterns are easy to change up according to the mood of the weaver and can add even greater variety to the piece. 
The design for the third mat demonstrates how alternate instances of a simple motif, in this case a rather jauntily nautical anchor, can be flipped 180 degrees for an appearance of greater complexity. Finally, the fourth draft uses a combination of weft and warp dominant areas to give the impression of positive and negative space. This is a nice way to spice up an otherwise repetitive design and is achieved by reversing the handles that are pulled. It is remarkable what we can do with just a few pattern shafts and the possibilities for new designs are endless. There's plenty of warp, six yards allows for roughly eight mats with plenty left over for sampling and experimentation. If you'd like a PDF of the recipe, please let me know. My email address can be found on the About page of this channel and on my website. If you're new to draw loom weaving or curious about the bigger picture, the following English language resources should get you going. Draw Loom Weaving by Joanne Hall and When a Single Harness Simply Isn't Enough by Sarah Von Trusco, available wherever fine weaving products are sold. A great visual resource is Becky Ashenden's invaluable Dress Your Swedish Draw Loom. The DVD and streaming video can be found at bevstuka.com. And please check out my own series, From Inspiration to Finished Object, a pretty thorough examination of how I set up and wove an original damask design on my combination draw loom. The purpose of this channel is to spread the good word about double harness weaving by sharing my own enthusiasm and experience with anybody who will listen. Whether you'd like a copy of the table mats recipe or just want to air your thoughts and questions about draw looms, please get in touch. And thank you, as always, for watching.